Kalatlit Nunat, the nation of the Kalatlit, the Greenlandic Inuit. 300 years of Danish rule have confined it to the extremities of the contemporary world. The path to independence is threatened by climate change and foreign interests pressing at the gates of the Arctic Circle. Although protected by ice armor, this island is a fragile land, difficult to reach, where living seems like a challenge. Yet it is precisely here that the keys to reading the present and anticipating our future reside. Welcome back to Greenland. Every search of Greenland results in a no-data label. This is a false myth because, although Greenlandic statistics are combined with those of Denmark, they do exist, and especially at the social level, they are not at all comforting. We told you in the last video, alcohol consumption is the biggest social scourge in Greenland. In the 70s and 80s, at the height of urbanization projects, Greenlanders drank on average 22 liters of alcohol per person per year. Today, the issue is mainly among young people. Half of Greenlanders between the ages of 15 and 34 suffer, or have suffered, from alcohol-related health problems. The quantities of alcohol drunk in Greenland, 7 liters per person per year, are lower than those in the Nordic countries, including Denmark. However, the social consequences of alcoholism are of concern, violence, abuse, and depression. In 2021, authorities in Tazilak banned the sale and consumption of alcohol for two weeks after recording in just three days two suicides or attempted suicides, one rape, and 15 incidents of domestic violence. According to a study conducted by the Nordic Center for Welfare and Social Issues, a fifth of children born after 1995 have suffered abuse. I think with traditional values comes also like a traditional view on gender roles on, and, and that's a thing that I've met a lot of times, you know, this view that women are supposed to be home nurturing and, and protecting the children and stuff like that, uh, doing the upraising and yeah, fathers go out, hunt. Provide. Over 40% of Greenlandic women have been raped or molested before the age of 18. In 2018 alone, Greenland police recorded more than 400 complaints of sexual harassment, eight times more than in Denmark. The judicial system certainly cannot be expected to resolve the situation. In Inuit culture, the worst punishments a community could inflict on its own members were exile and public blame. The first Greenlandic Penal Code of 1954 was based precisely on shame as the maximum punishment. In fact, until 2019, the year of inauguration of Anstalten in Nuuk, Greenland did not have any prisons, with the exception of six correctional facilities located in the largest center of the island. Those guilty of heinous crimes were sent directly to Denmark. In the rest of the cases, convicts still serve their sentences in an open system that requires their presence in correctional facilities from evening until morning, but which allows them to lead a normal life. On one hand, we can only learn from a mechanism that prefers resocialization to punishment as an end in itself. On the other hand, it is plausible that those who commit abuse or violence, whether influenced by alcohol or not, will continue undisturbed. Greenlandic society presents other critical issues. One of these is dirt. Come potete vedere qui alle mie spalle, tutto questo cumulo di spazzatura che ha catastato su questa collina è una cosa abbastanza comune in Groenlandia, il che fa un po' da contrasto con il paesaggio che possiamo ammirare anche qui tra gli iceberg che circondano questa, questa baia. In Greenland there's no real waste management system. Most of the garbage is incinerated or buried while the most dangerous waste is transferred to Denmark, but there are no precise data on the actual quantities disposed of. The roughness of the soil and the Arctic climate cause a lack of fresh food, especially fruit and vegetables. Processed meats, canned products, snacks, and surgery products imported mainly from Denmark do not allow for a balanced diet. 
The Greenland Public Health Center considers half of the island's population to be overweight, while a quarter of the Greenlanders are obese. The health problem is accompanied by diseases resulting from the high consumption of tobacco, smoked by 60% of the inhabitants. It is therefore not surprising that the data relating to life expectancy for women and men, 74 and 69 years, is rather low compared to that of other Western states. In more complicated cases, isolation, abuse, illness, and alcoholism lead to suicide. If Greenland were an autonomous state, it would be the country with the highest suicide rate in the world, 83 per 100,000 people per year. The phenomenon is even more incisive on the East Coast, an area where colonization arrived late and with disastrous effects on the identity of the local Inuit. In Dazilak, the suicide rate stands at 400 per 100,000 inhabitants, a frightening figure, and there isn't even a psychologist in the town. Abbiamo qui un ospedale che funziona anche molto bene, però un medico generico e se qualcuno ha veramente qualche cosa di speciale, uh, muore. Is it hard living here? Since 2004, the Greenlandic government has implemented a nationwide suicide prevention strategy and is in the process of launching a new plan. Mark himself is part of this program. You will have noticed that none of the factors we have mentioned have to do with the elusive six months of darkness, a stereotypical trait of Nordic countries. Surely, darkness can influence a person's unhappiness, but it is wrong to generalize the issue. <sighs> Oggi il sole non c'è, ma questo è l'aspetto che ha il cielo a mezzanotte in Groenlandia. O meglio, non in tutta la Groenlandia, perché per poter assistere a quello che state vedendo, al sole di mezzanotte, dobbiamo fisicamente trovarci al di sopra del circolo polare artico. It is right here in Aluasit, 300 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, one of the northernmost settlements on Earth, that I take this opportunity to once again thank NordVPN, which believed in our project from the beginning and allowed us to travel to Greenland to record this reportage. Greenland is not part of the EU, which means you can take advantage of free data roaming, and the further north you go, the more you fuel the lack of an internet connection. The only public Wi-Fi is found only in the airports, which are lost in the middle of nowhere, or in the hotels where we stayed. We were often forced to remain still in a room for hours. We wouldn't have been able to work safely or surf the internet if it weren't for NordVPN. Thanks to its advanced encryption system, NordVPN allows you to connect to public networks all over the world without worrying about running into malware and your data or passwords being exposed to scams or bad actors. Furthermore, thanks to NordVPN, you can mask your IP address and geolocate yourself any Anywhere in the world, so as to visit websites that would otherwise be inaccessible from your country, be it Italy or Greenland. Until October 1st, you can still take advantage of a special offer. If you purchase any NordVPN two-year plan, you will receive an Amazon gift voucher for 10, 20, or 30 euros, depending on the plan you have chosen. In the description, you will find the link to the NordVPN site to take advantage of all the advantages. For those who live in Greenland, darkness is normal. Il meteo però non, non, non dà fastidio. Siamo abituati al tempo qua. Eh, anche nell'inverno quando fa meno 30 gradi la vita è lo stesso. Anche i pescatori che, che vanno a pescare sono abituati alle, alle condizioni. Ti sei abituato ormai all'inverno groenlandese, al, alla mancanza di sole? No, ma abbiamo quattro ore, abbiamo luce, okay. forse anche cinque ore ogni tanto. Se c'è brutto tempo è sempre nero mm -hmm. tutto, però si sta bene. Tutti pensano che fosse qualche problema, no, non c'è nessun problema. Ti alzi il mattino e guardi l'orologio, sono già le nove e vai avanti. Abbiamo delle tempeste che arrivano oltre 200 km orari. Si vede qui le case sono danneggiate. Tutte le case tremano anche per 20-30 cm si muovono e poi la natura è proprio forte, è proprio lei, lei, lei che comanda. Non siamo noi che comandiamo e questo ci fa piacere. Coming from a Western society where everything is uh, immediate high tempo and, mm. and like you plan three I was about to say years ahead or whatever, like, it's very refreshing to be here and, and, and actually just focusing on, on the now, being kind of like, you know, smitten by the 
the way of of viewing everyday life. That's that's this is what matters now is what you're doing now and not what you're doing a week from now. On average, a Greenlander earns more than $30,000 a year. This income, however, must be read in the light of a high cost of living, which one realizes when entering a supermarket or looking for a hotel room. In fact, 16% of the population lives below the poverty line. This figure depends on the lack of diversification of the local economy. 40% of Greenlanders work in the public sector. In the cities, 5,000 people are employed in the service sector, and in the settlements, another 5,000 hunt, farm, and fish. I pull up here, uh, we can only kill 25. Uh, only hunters uh, can kill the uh, So you have a rifle, you have a, a, a pistol or, or a yeah. gun. Have you ever seen uh, a bear attack? in the town. Bears coming, I mean, uh, never, I never saw that attack. But a uh, long time ago in Kulusuk mm -hmm. uh, airport, there was attack, uh, a man. Uh, he took the hair and uh, oh. skin off, but he, he survived. Some endangered species, such as the polar bear, the arctic whale, and the narwhal, can no longer be hunted freely. There are also stringent limitations and licenses on the hunting of seals, whose skins have long characterized Greenlandic exports. The sled dogs, once trusted companions of the Inuit, are now stationed at the borders of the inhabited centers, tied to poles and caged, waiting for the arrival of the snow and the tourists. Oil, the island's main energy source, comes from Copenhagen along with five hydroelectric power plants that have been in operation since the 1990s. In short, we are talking about a region with limited options. It's no coincidence that every year the Danish government directs almost $600 million to Greenland. This figure covers more than half of the new government's budget and it's equivalent to one quarter of Greenland's GDP. Considering everything we have said, independence, especially economic independence, would seem more like a dream than an ambition. However, on its side, the largest island in the world has a very powerful diplomatic weapon, natural resources. In 1946, the U.S. government attempted to buy Greenland by offering Denmark $100 million. The White House was not only interested in the military and strategic value of the island, but also its mineral deposits. The Greenland coasts, in fact, are rich in gold zinc, coal, iron, and uranium. In 2019, Donald Trump revived the idea of purchasing the island. Although apparently absurd and resulting in nothing, the offer was based on a clear prediction. The fate of global markets could be played out in Greenland. Greenland's seabed hides 18 billion barrels of oil and 4 trillion cubic meters of natural gas. To be clear, these numbers amount to 10% of all the oil and natural gas left on Earth. Furthermore, the Kavana Field site in southern Greenland is believed to contain the world's second largest deposit of rare earths. Rare earths are a group of 17 minerals useful in the manufacture of conductors, catalysts, and batteries for the key industries of renewable energy, defense, transport, and aerospace. All the resources we have listed are still untouched and constitute invaluable reserves. If they want to grab them, the U.S. must deal with Denmark, which formally holds the sovereignty of Greenland, and with China, determined to invest in the island's mining and fishing industry. Already in 2007, Greenland Minerals, a Chinese company based in Australia, proposed to extract uranium in Kavana Field. Siema, the party that has governed Greenland since 79, has always been favorable to the Chinese project. The income that would derive from this and other future foreign investments would allow Nuke to break away from Denmark once and for all. There is a however, Greenlanders are not willing to sell off their land. As the years have passed, political and public opposition to the opening of the Kavana Field mine has focused on its environmental impact. In 2021, the general elections for the renewal of the Greenlandic Parliament saw the emergence of the Inuit Atikaduit, literally Inuit community, a socialist, environmentalist, and independence party as the main political force. In the space of a few months, the current Prime Minister, Yut Borup Egid, has scuttled the Chinese project, ceased negotiations for any excavation or drilling, and locked down Greenland. At the moment, Egid and his supporters believe that independence is a secondary issue compared to the last real challenge of the new millennium, climate change. 80% of Greenland's land is covered by ice. Three quadrillion tons of snow accumulated over millennia have formed a three kilometer thick ice sheet that contains 10% of all the fresh water on the planet.
Ci troviamo di fronte agli iceberg della Baia di Disco. Qui finisce il ghiacciaio di Kangia, patrimonio UNESCO e origine del 10% dei ghiacciai groenlandesi. Tuttavia, questa distesa di ghiaccio che vedete nel giro di poche decine di anni potrebbe scomparire completamente e diventare acqua. Every year, Greenland loses approximately 300 billion tons of ice. According to the Geological Institute for Denmark and Greenland, the melting ice of the Greenland ice sheet will increase sea levels by 27 centimeters by 2100. This is the most optimistic forecast. The speed at which the melting proceeds will more or less markedly impact the future of Greenland. Il ghiacciaio qua è il più attivo del mondo del nord. Un, un altro ghiacciaio più attivo si deve trovare nel polo sud. Lower quantities of ice in the Arctic mean greater ease of transit by those powers that are interested in conquering polar trade routes like the US and Russia. More accessible coastlines would pave the way for new mineral exploration and investment opportunities. At that point, it will be up to Greenland to choose whether to give in to foreign advances in exchange for long-awaited independence. Climate change will inevitably also change the lifestyle of Greenlanders. Local ecosystems travel the fishing industry and hunting. Just think of the fact that warm weather could lead to the dispersion of boreal shrimp, whose exports to Greenland are worth more than $150 million a year. According to data reported by The Guardian, 90% of Greenlanders believe that climate change is a real problem and 75% say they have already experienced its effects on their skin. Sometimes opinions are conflicting. Like, that's the thing, I, I kind of heard about this, like, climate anxiety being a thing that's actually also kind of, like, growing in, in Western Europe. Europe. I haven't met one single case up here. I think, you know, Westerners growing up in a lot more stable uh, society, society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of makes that an issue. Whereas when you grow up here, I would imagine that there's a lot more things to be scared of or, you know, like, being, be, like, um, affected by. Flying over Greenland is a surreal experience. Blinded by the white, you really have the sensation of wandering in a parallel reality. With our feet on the ground, however, our imagination fades, and that large island that we observe curiously on maps as children suddenly becomes vivid and tangible. Cities and villages exude a decadent modernity, linked to an ancient, coldly wild, and therefore fascinating landscape. After all, Greenland is an emblem of greed, and at the same time of the adaptability of us humans. One day, perhaps, the polar desert will give way to mountains and tundra. When that day comes, we won't have done enough to avoid it. For now, we need to remember that Greenland's resources are not meant to solve our problems, but those of the Greenlanders, the Inuit. Because, as Robert reminds us, we are at their home here.